Thank you everyone for joining us on today's webinar uh, with Wealth Wizards to talk about how they're doing cloud scale threat detection using Amazon Guard Duty and Alert Logic. My name is Ryan Holland. I'm a principal technical specialist at Amazon Web Services with the External Security Services team. And I'm joined today by Jeremy Breland, who's a senior solution architect at Alert Logic, and Richard Marshall, who's the CTO at Wealth Wizards. So to get started, uh, we want to give a, a brief overview of uh, Guard Duty, just to set the context of, of how the service uh, works and give you an idea of uh, what it's capable of doing. So we, we actually launched Guard Duty at reInvent uh, last year in uh, 2017. And we really decided to build this service to help solve some of the, the problems we were hearing from customers, strictly around related to the complexity of threat detection in AWS, uh, also some challenges around signal to noise, getting and trying to help reduce false positives that were happening in uh, some tools that weren't built specifically for AWS, but also to help out with skill shortage and uh, the cost of maintaining a secure environment in AWS using some traditional tools. And uh, so what we decided to do with Guard Duty was to build a managed threat detection service that operated at cloud scale and was specifically designed to identify malicious or unauthorized behavior, as well as behavior that appears unusual uh, in your environment. But this is strictly related to the behavior of your EC2 instances themselves, uh, as well as through CloudTrail monitoring the activity of users using APIs. And so we're looking for uh, specifically compromised credentials, uh, maybe credentials that have been um, compromised in some way and they're being used by an attacker uh, to launch instances on your behalf or to make changes in your environment, or also behavior and uh, from the network level coming from EC2 instances that is indicative of a compromised instance or could be a configuration problem where uh, an attacker is doing reconnaissance activity to try to identify a weakness in your environment. So some of the, the key features uh, of Guard Duty, right, again, it's not only protecting the hosts or the instances that you're running in your account, but also the AWS count credentials themselves. And we look at detecting of threats in two different ways. So we use threat intelligence-based detection in order for us to identify some known threats based on network behavior. And in this case, we are looking at three different sources of data from a, for threat, threat intel. We have uh, partnerships with Proofpoint and CrowdStrike. So when you enable Guard Duty, you're, you're getting access to threat feeds from both of those partners. And we also have quite a bit of our own threat intelligence here at AWS that we generate. As you can imagine, uh, at our scale and with the, the large percentage of the internet that we end up hosting, we end up getting a pretty good visibility into a lot of the bad actors out there. And customers had asked us quite often if they could find a way to get access to some of that. And through Guard Duty as a way for us to distribute or kind of leverage that threat intelligence at scale. But one of the, the key value props of the service is the ability to detect unknown threats as well using behavioral analysis and machine learning. And so we do that by profiling what is the activity that users generally take and what is the behavior of instances uh, in, in a normal situation. We were very, very uh, insistent on making sure that the product itself didn't create a lot of noise and reduced false positives as much as possible. And instead of just generating alerts, we wanted to give actionable findings. So when we tell you something has happened, it's very clear what the, the security action that, that you need to take is. We also realized that all of our, most of our customers have existing third-party security tools, such as Alert Logic, that they would like to use with Guard Duty. And so we made sure that it was very easy to integrate with third parties and also that we had a very strong partner message when we launched the service. The last one is a really uh, important uh, feature of the service, and, and that is one of the traditional challenges a lot of times we found was when a customer goes to uh, use some security services, it can be kind of heavy lift to, to get uh, those services deployed and maintained across all of their instances. And so we wanted to make it so with one click, you could activate the service. And so we actually have the uh, setup and activation of the service down to one single click. There's no configuration that's required. There's no um, configuration of log sources that is necessary. You simply press one button on the console and Guard Duty on your behalf starts analyzing log files behind the scenes. 
And so how we do that is we're really looking at three specific threat types. So reconnaissance activity, this is generally going to mean that you have a, a configuration best practice that you've not followed. A uh, key example would be if you leave your SSH or a desktop port open to the internet, uh, some folks will come along and they will try to brute force uh, activities on those ports. So we will, we will raise those as reconnaissance alerts, and it's generally a good idea to look at those and go and identify ways to tighten up your security groups. Uh, on the instance compromise, again, we're looking at activity from the network perspective from an instance that is indicative of a compromised instance. So maybe it's communicating with a known command and control host, or it's simply act, talking to a, a Tor network or um, a Bitcoin mining, uh, mining pool, or it could even just be that it's doing something that is significantly different from a networking perspective than it ordinarily does. And then the last one is account compromise, where we're profiling the activity of uh, your roles and your users within your account, understanding where do they normally log in from, what time do they normally log in, uh, what API calls are they, do they generally use, and we'll raise alerts if uh, sensitive API activity starts taking place either from a location that's unusual or they're trying to access API calls that they don't normally do. And the way that we do this is by analyzing three data sources within AWS. Uh, the first one is EPC flow logs, which give you activity very, uh, about the network traffic from instances both inside the VPC as well as to where they're talking out on the internet. Uh, DNS query logs, uh, these is the, what, what hosts are you resolving? And are these hosts known to either be involved in malicious activity, part of Tor, or like I said, part of Bitcoin mining pools. And then the last one to track the account compromise uh, activity is by monitoring CloudTrail events so that we can profile the activities of all of your users and roles. And three key things to, to talk about on this. Uh, the first one is, uh, as I mentioned, there's only a single click to enable this service. You don't have to go and turn on any of those logging sources. And uh, that's a very important one because a lot of times customers um, might not have VPC flow logs enabled, and it's important to note that you don't need to turn those on in your account in order for us to get access to them. We, we get access to those logs once you enable the service from behind the scenes. Uh, DNS query logs, currently, uh, we don't make these accessible to customers directly. Uh, so actually, Amazon Guard Duty right now is the only way uh, of getting your DNS activity monitored within VPC. And then the last one, again, CloudTrail. While you don't need to turn on CloudTrail in order for GuardDuty to work, it is a very strong recommended security practice to enable it. Um, but again, if you don't have it enabled for some reason, we do still get access to all of that information. Uh, and again, we do that uh, behind the back end directly from those services. And all of those log sources go into uh, the GuardDuty service where we apply the threat intelligence, the machine learning, and the, and, uh, and the anomaly detection engines. And we output a finding that's um, you know, like a, a traffic light, high, medium, or low, to give you actionable information about what you should, what activity is taking place in your account. And this goes out through CloudWatch events. And through CloudWatch events, you can integrate it with your partner tools. You can uh, send notifications. It's very easy to then integrate that with uh, any, other, any other software out there. One of the other key benefits uh, of GuardDuty is as we continue to evolve the service and add new detections or tune our existing detections, there's no updates that need to take place uh, on your side as a customer. Everything again happens back on our service. So when we add new detections, which as you can see on this graph, we continuously have been uh, do adding additional ones over the months. You automatically get that additional security value without any changes uh, on your account. Again, as I mentioned, we, we use CloudWatch events to send out uh, finding information, and that goes out through a JSON format. It can also be retrieved through uh, API calls. But it allows you to do programmatic response, and that's how our partners like Alert Logic uh, consume that finding data. Uh, we do also have a management console where you can see all the information about that finding. And we enrich that, that finding with things uh, from the network level with what instance created it, what tags are associated with it. Um, and then any other information that, about like the source that triggered it, what, which threat intelligence feed it was, or if it was machine learning, uh, what type of um, anomaly we detected. So this is the workflow for remediation. And we see a lot of customers start to 
uh, attach an automatic remediation to this workflow. So guard duty detects something, and we report that through CloudWatch events. And through CloudWatch events, you can trigger Lambda functions, which allows you to take action in an automated fashion or just send those to another, another tool. A um, couple typical workflows that we see might be uh, remediating a compromised instance. So if an instance is uh, performing Bitcoin mining, for example, you might want to modify the network ACL or to isolate that instance so you can do an investigation. Same thing for compromised credentials. You might want to automatically rotate those keys or to notify a user to check and see if that activity was expected. One of the other uh, tenants that we have uh, as a service is that security tools do need to be made available globally. So when we launched GA, we launched in all of the public regions. Uh, we added GovCloud support earlier this year. Um, and so we will be native also to new regions when we launch them. Um, all, the only two regions we're not currently available in right now are the two regions in China. But we do have that uh, as something we do plan to add later in the future. Uh, pricing on the service. So customers are always often concerned about price. And as I mentioned, we did work very hard to make this a very low cost service. So that way it can be mass enabled by everyone so they get that level of protection. And our pricing in Amazon is normally cost following. So we, we charge you essentially based on what it cost us to provide the service. Uh, so we have those three log sources. Uh, the first two, VPC flow logs and DNS logs. Uh, we charge by the gigabyte, uh, so your first 500 gigabytes, and you can see it's tiered. So if you have a very large account, you'll actually move through those, those pricing tiers fairly quickly. And then on CloudTrail, it's per million CloudTrail events that we analyze. And we do do optimization on both of those to kind of weed out some of the events that we know don't have any value for us. Uh, one of the other things that's very important about this is a lot of times customers will look at this and they, they're not really sure how much flow logs they generate or how many CloudTrail events they have. So to make this very, very simple for customers, um, unlike a lot of services that will have a free, uh, free tier where you're allowed so much usage in your first year, we went to a different model and had a free trial. So every single account and every single region that you enable uh, gets the first 30 days of service at no cost. So it will allow you to evaluate what your cost will be going forward. And to help make this even easier, uh, in our console, when you're on your free trial period, there will be a free trial tab uh, in the console on the, the navigation bar on the left. And if you click on that, it will show you how many days you have remaining on your trial, as well as how many uh, CloudTrail events, flow logs, and DNS query logs we have processed for you in that month, and what your estimated daily cost for the service will be. So that way, at the end of your month, you know uh, with pretty good certainty about what your cost will be. Uh, to maintain the service. So just to kind of uh, summarize, right, it's a managed threat detection service that you can enable very quickly and very easily with a single button in the console or with a single API call. It has no performance impact because there's nothing running inside your environment. We do everything behind the scenes to identify potentially compromised instances or credentials. And generally, people start seeing findings within their account within minutes of turning the uh, service on. And it's also, again, very cost effective with simple pricing and the ability to get the first 30 days of service at no cost to help you understand what your, your charges for the service going forward will be. Um, again, one of the last pieces of this that's really important, as I mentioned, we may be very easy to integrate uh, with third party tools, uh, such as our Alert Logic, which is one of our launch partners for the service. And we also have a, a very wide um, breadth of potential partners out there as well that you can leverage. So with that, I will hand this over to Jeremy to talk about the Alert Logic integration with GuardD. Jeremy? Great, thank you, Ryan. Uh, so my name is uh, Jeremy Breland. I'm a senior solutions architect with Alert Logic uh, and X AWS SA. Um, to further Ryan's discussion on Guard Duty, we'll talk a little bit about our logic and our integration with Guard Duty as well. Before we, we get started, uh, let me give you a little bit of uh, information on, you know, kind of who we are and what we do. Uh, so we offer our own technology and software, much like a SaaS provider does, uh, but we also offer services much like an MSSP would. 
Uh, we combine those two together for a unique offering as a, a security as a service offering that, that really gives visibility and helps you secure your entire application stack. Uh, and this is in, in any environment. So ultimately we go uh, wherever IT resides. Uh, and to give a little background on the, the company, uh, we were founded in 2002 initially uh, and started launching services on AWS platform in 2012. Uh, so we have a long history of helping customers on the AWS platform to take on some of the undifferentiated heavy lifting of security and compliance, which ultimately helps organization, organizations accelerate their journey to the cloud. So there, there's an importance of when you look at threat detection, um, I think you know ultimately the, the best way to look at this is the, uh, the good guys have to be right all the time. Uh, the bad guys only have to be right once. Uh, and in order for the, the good guys to, to be right all the time, you know, that, that requires a, a few things that are, that are complex. And ultimately, you know, getting security right is, is hard and it's something that you have to constantly work at. One of these portions is uh, understanding your environment. So really context is everything. So, you know, in order to secure something, you have to know about it and, and have visibility into that to, to secure it. Um, when you also look at stuff, you know, from a, a security perspective, you know, you can have a, an impenetrable server, but uh, there might be some usability issues when, you know, if that's at the, the bottom of the ocean. So it, it comes to really trying to secure everything up front and then monitor things on an ongoing basis. I'm, I'm sure everybody's probably seen uh, the shared responsibility model from AWS. Um, this kind of comes down to uh, really a, a, a really brief statement of, you know, AWS takes takes on security of the cloud and the customer is responsible for security in the cloud. Um, so when you look at the, the customer side of the, the responsibility model, when you look at the application stack, um, that can also become more more complex uh, depending on how, you know, how many different pieces you're running in that, that app, app stack. Uh, so you might have vulnerabilities in a CMS leveraged with a database as other vulnerabilities the, the individually you take care of, but when you combine those, they might have uh, unintended, uh, unintended outcomes on that uh, that create a new vulnerability. And this also changes depending on, you know, really the, there, there's a few different uh, models that you look at depending on, on what services you leverage from AWS. Uh, so, you know, for instance, are, are you using opaque data um, or, you know, are you taking on the encryption of your data or are you relying on AWS to take on that encryption? So it's important to understand uh, those responsibilities and, you know, really where the, where the, line, uh, where the line is there. So as I mentioned, we, you know, we kind of take on a, an approach of uh, locking down the, the doors and windows up front. Um, but again, it's it's impossible to completely lock those down unless you block everything. Uh, and then again, there, there's the, the usability issue uh, outside of that. So really how we how we help with that is we look to uh, give you information from vulnerabilities, configuration assessments, and ultimately reduce your attack service, uh, and then give you monitoring, you know, in the form of uh, IDS and log management. Uh, to monitor that ongoing so you can see anything that, that might have gotten through. Uh, and then ultimately doing blocks um, from, a, from web attacks up front. Uh, so, you know, really it's easy to identify the known good and known bads, uh, but where most of the suspicious activity lays in is, is really in the uh, gray areas or the noise. Uh, and so that's where we, we spend a lot of time on analyzing that noise uh, so that we can proactively block that up front. As I mentioned, um, you know, we, we offer uh, kind of a holistic security platform. Uh, so we're looking at the complete application stack. Uh, so we're looking at IDS events, uh, web application events, um, log events, and, and also doing uh, some asset modeling uh, on the AWS platform, uh, as well as looking at some of the best practices and vulnerability management aspect um, up front. And then as you flow through this, uh, you can see, you know, with that proactive uh, approach, 
that we're taking that and blocking critical 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 attacks, um, and doing data collection, and then ultimately uh, boiling those down to uh, incident, uh, and that goes out to our security experts that are uh, in our 24 by 7 security operations center, um, and all that is kind of wrapped around. Uh, and that kind of points to the service that I mentioned before, uh, which is our security, not only our security operations center, uh, but we also have a 24 by 7 content team uh, that fine tunes the machine learning algorithms, uh, produces all our security content, uh, et cetera. And all of that is included by default with, with our service. So as I mentioned, the, the service this includes multiple individuals. So we have uh, certified security analysts, 24 by 7 in the SOC. Um, then, as I mentioned, the, the content team is comprised of uh, multiple individuals. Uh, so that can be, you know, just producing security content can really be the job of multiple full-time employees by itself. Uh, so we have machine learning uh, scientists that, that fine-tune the, the algorithms we, we use. Uh, we have uh, content researchers that look at the data from our over 4,000 customers, uh, produce content on that. Uh, we also have researchers that go out and look on the, the dark web to purchase tools uh, and reverse engineer those and, and produce content. Um, and much like the, the guard duty updates, uh, the, the updates from Alert Logic are automatically pushed out to your environment. So it's not something you have to um, be proactive in, in updating. Those automatically get pushed out multiple times throughout the week. And as I mentioned, the, the vulnerability management and we have automated exposure for, for AWS. Um, I'll go into kind of our guard duty integration, but we do have uh, guard duty integration along with uh, integration with like a, uh, AWS inspector uh, and AWS config. That you can roll all that into uh, a single you know, pane of glass view uh, for all those constructs. Um, all of this comes down to and, and also helps solve the, the you know, quote unquote, now what problem uh, that, that many organizations face that they they find all these vulnerabilities and these incidents, um, but then it becomes a, an exercise of kind of untangling, you know, that that bowl of spaghetti, if you will, to understand, you know, where they're going to get the most bang for their buck uh, and ultimately how they should focus or, or where they should focus their um, limited security resources, uh, again, to, to remediate the most critical incidents. Um, and I'll get I'll get into uh, that a little bit later on uh, exactly you know how we we help with the the now what problem. So as as we've been kind of getting into this and and really getting into the integration with with guard duty, um, as Ryan mentioned, you saw some of the really the the constructs. Uh, of guard duty as well as how you receive those al those alerts or findings from guard duty. Um, so we take those and, and add some enrichment on top of that uh, to give you the understanding, the, the why, where, and how uh, of the guard duty findings. Um, so you, you can ultimately, again, identify and prioritize those findings uh, to quickly shut down the, the ones that are critical uh, and understand which ones you have some uh, some runway on. Uh, to, to really remediate. This also, as I mentioned previously, uh, does continuous checks for configuration. So we look at the AWS best practices and add uh, a bunch of security uh, configuration checks on top of that. Uh, so we might look at, uh, so some examples of that is we would look at uh, maybe S3 buckets that are open to the world. Uh, we also do some deep inspection on IM policies or identity and access management policies. Uh, to look for policy that are, that are over promiscuous. Uh, so for instance, maybe you have a database administrator that his IAM policy gives them full access to uh, the AWS services. Um, and then ultimately they probably only need access to the, the database services aspect of that. The guard duty integration, um, you can launch that uh, pretty seamlessly. Uh, that requires no footprint on your AWS environment, we're leveraging all of the uh, innate APIs that are available from AWS itself uh, to ingest those. So kind of what Ryan mentioned before, as far as uh, the API availability with guard duty, 
Uh, so we pull that in uh, via those APIs. And again, that, that requires zero footprint on the customer's environment. So diving a little bit deeper on that, uh, when you look at the activation of it, so you, you would turn that on in an individual member account, uh, or maybe you have multiple AWS accounts and you enable that in a master account uh, and have the, all those sent uh, to that account. Um, either way, those come in, uh, as Ryan mentioned, into a guard duty finding, uh, which ultimately is a CloudWatch event. Uh, so with our services, we have a CloudFormation template that deploys a, a Lambda function uh, and does a CloudWatch event collector. Uh, so we collect those you know, Amazon Guard Duty findings via that. Uh, we then send that back to the analytics platform. So we enrich that again with, uh, you know, really understanding the, the why, where, and how of that Guard Duty finding. That also gives you some remediation recommendations. Uh, as well as uh, some visualization on that finding, uh, and then also reporting uh, on that find on those findings, so you can see trends as well. So I've talked enough about uh, alert logic. We want to spend uh, kind of a, a bulk of our time uh, really talking about uh, one of our customers, Wealth Wizards, uh, and really let uh, Richard talk about the the challenges that they faced and and how they solved them. So with that I'll turn it over to Richard. Hi, Jeremy. Thank you for that. Um, so I'm, I'm Richard Marshall. I'm, I'm CTO at Wealth Wizards. Uh, in, until recently, actually, I was uh, head of platform here. So um, I, I've actually kind of I've been using Guard Duty in the AWS platform and um, Alert Logic on a daily basis up to <laughs> up until very recently. So um, you know, I, I I really get a feel for what it what it does and how it benefits us. Um, so I'm just going to start off by going through uh, kind of what we are as a business, what we do, um, and kind of some of the problems that that we face, and how Alert Logic and AWS help us address that. We're, we're an FCA regulated provider, so the FCA is uh, the UK body that make it's the Financial Conduct Authority. It makes sure that anybody in the UK uh, who is giving advice or doing anything to do with um, with finances is saying and doing the right things, and they can be held accountable. Um, so the FCA are kind of a, re a real bunch of sticklers. They, they like things to be done properly, which, which means that uh, we've got to do things properly here. We as a business, we, we're a robo-advisor. So um, we automate things like pension advice, retirement advice. Uh, if you've got to retirement, um, what, what's the best way to draw down your money to, to look after yourself and, and predict what finances you'll need and have available to you as you go forward? So these are really complex things that um, takes kind of very highly skilled advisors to, to provide. Um, so our, our, our purpose really is to, to reduce the cost of that and make it available to more people. Um, so we, we offer robo advice um, both directly as a provider ourselves, but also um, through a software as a service platform, and we, we consume our own our own platform. Um, so not only are we concerned about the advice that we give, we also have some really big customers. So um, they're concerned about how we secure our platform, uh, and you know we need to make sure that we don't have any kind of reputational issues. So security in the um, the, you know how, how our platform complies with SCA requirements is really really important for us. Um, we're also we're, we're an agile company. We like to deliver change quickly. Um, most of the companies we work with are not so keen on rapid change. They like things to be set in stone and, and not change frequently. But we know that's not a way to kind of to, to make improvements. So uh, we're an agile company. And we we have to kind of reconcile that difference. And uh, AWS and Alert Logic actually go some way to helping with that. Okay, so um, we we used to have a, a fairly typical environment. In fact, we still do in many ways. Um, we, we were originally a managed service environment, so uh, we would rent servers from um, you know a small company that would go and install something for us, and it was our problem. We, we moved to a, a managed cloud environment um, where uh, a, the provider would they would provide the infrastructure for us, but they would also do kind of some of the OS management. Um, we, we've now moved about a year ago to a fully cloud native platform. So we're 100% hosted in AWS. Um, 
and we make really heavy use of the automation tools around us, uh, around that. Um, so we're uh, using products like Terraform, for example, to build out our environment. Um, I've, I've touched on compliance. Compliance is a really important piece in our industry. Uh, it, it's very heavily regulated. We get audited uh, by pretty much all of our customers, but also um, by, we, we're ISO, uh, um, we have an ISO 27001 certificate. Um, and so, uh, you know, auditors at all levels are going to want to know that we're doing things correctly, that we can account for changes we've made, that we know what's going on inside the system that uh, we are able to uh, detect and respond rapidly to security problems um, so, and things like customer data uh, and customer privacy are of course extremely important to us and making sure that we that we tidy up that data at the right point and that we uh, remove that data from our system um, th these are all kind of things that that take up a lot of our time and um, you know, cause problems for us. Uh, and so we really want to be able to, to make our life as easy as we can and offload those things that we can, which is why things like uh, the APIs available through uh, AWS uh, are so valuable because it means we can automate the things that, um, that we repeat frequently. Um, funny enough, the, the great thing about having uh, frequently changing services that are managed through APIs is that those APIs and the actions tend to be tracked, which is great for an audit trail. And, and funny enough, auditors actually kind of quite like that. So even though the systems are changing quickly, um, the audit trails that we get are, are invaluable. Um, so, uh, you know, I've touched on a, a rapidly changing environment. This kind of leads to, to problems that in a traditional world would be difficult to answer. So, you know, what subnets do I currently have deployed? How many VPCs do I have? Um, where, where, how many machines are running currently? What happened to that machine that went away three hours ago? Where was that IP address? Um, you know, there's an awful lot of things changing in the platform. And most of the traditional tools that are available to us just don't really help with that. Um, and so what, what we as a group of uh, engineers want to do is concentrate on solving the problems that are directly affecting our customers. So we want to write, write great code. We want to build a stable platform um, that can get that code deployed quickly. Um, we really want to co concentrate on the, those kind of those core problems. We don't have lots of security expertise in house. Uh, you know, we're all security conscious, but um, when you talk to a real security expert, you start to realize just how little you know about these things and all the areas you're not thinking about. Uh, and so we, we just don't have that. We don't have capacity for that in, in house at the moment. Um, the, the other really interesting thing about running an IaaS platform is that it, even though you you know things there, you know that there's a router sitting somewhere, it, it's abstracted away and we don't have the visibility of it anymore. Um, and so, you know, that, that causes some frustrations at, at times. Um, we also find we have an awful lot of places we need to go to manage things. So what we have the APIs and our configuration management systems. Um, we also need to go to interfaces, uh, so user interfaces uh, across both AWS and uh, AlertLogic to try and establish things. Um, and, and so th these kind of cause problems for us. Um, and so this is kind of where Alert Logic and AWS working together really, really comes into its own for us. So while we can benefit from tools like Guard Duty and AWS, um, which, which kind of give us that, that over the horizon, that under the surface visibility that we don't really get anymore in a, an infrastructure as a service platform, uh, we, we can also use things like um, CloudTrail, which again is really valuable because it means we can audit those changes going on. Um, we also make use of things like WAF and um, Shield to provide some DOS mitigation. Um, it, it becomes really difficult, difficult for us to go to all the different areas of AWS to to find out about those things and, and to, to keep an eye on them uh, and to monitor them and to, to really get the visibility we need. And this is where Alert Logic provides some really invaluable service to us. So because these things are available in Alert Logic, we can go to, to one place to find out all of the things that relate to our security concerns. Um, it even provides us with a workflow to, to remediate those issues. So 
Alert Logic really takes that the the kind of load of security away from our platform engineers. It, it means they can concentrate on our on our core competencies and, and, and getting the applications deployed and running uh, running effectively and supporting our development teams. Um, but we can also get other things uh, through Alert Logic. So, for example, we also have a, a managed IDS solution, uh, and we get log monitoring and review, which are things that AWS doesn't offer, but we can get from uh, Alert Logic. Um, and because we can get all of these tools through Alert Logic, it it, it means we get really good visibility of uh, kind of a full defense in depth solution. So, um, we know we can go to Alert Logic to look at both the infrastructure, but also the application layer, uh, right out to the kind of the perimeter and see what's happening at the edge of our environment and what attacks are going on. Um, we are also finding that uh, Alert Logic are really valuable because they they provide an awful lot of advice on a kind of proactive advice on what we need to be doing. So, um, some of the information that is available through the AWS tools can be uh, can be wrapped up inside Alert Logic, and they now offer things like CIS benchmarking of our AWS infrastructure, uh, and it it will call out specific tasks we should be going through and, and advising on best practice, and giving us the workflow around doing those things. So the the two um, solutions together is a really valuable and really beneficial kind of um, the they're kind of very useful allies for us in that way. Um, so, for example, this is kind of one of the areas that we found particularly useful recently. Uh, in the Alert Logic interface, it, it can say which, um, you know, where we should be making better use of IAM roles or which IAM roles are too open. Um, it will flag, uh, say, uh, inactive user accounts and so on. It, it's very good at kind of keeping an eye on uh, things that are, we're not doing that well. And as I say, we can actually benchmark those against the, the CIS standard now. So we can actually kind of get a score out of this and, and really know just how well we're doing. Um, so we find those those two services are, are, are really complementary and really valuable for us. And it, it just means we, we have to worry a lot less about security. Um, on, on that, I'm going to hand back to Jeremy, who is uh, going to take us through uh, some of the workflows that uh, the Alert Logic offers us and, and helps us address those issues. Uh, so, Jeremy, thank you. Back to you. That was great. Thank, thank you, Richard. Uh, one thing I will, will add is, um, you know, we will have a, a section at the, the end of this presentation for uh, Q and A. Uh, so please feel free to add in the, the questions uh, into the questions box uh, as we go along here as well. Uh, so, as, as Richard mentioned. Uh, you know, we kind of uh, enrich things and, and and add information to it and give some visibility uh, and help with remediation workflows. Uh, so what you see here uh, is an example of that. So you can see um, it, you, the, the first thing you would see is the investigation report that gives you a brief synopsis of what's going on with that incident. Um, and then also some quick uh, remediation recommendations that, that you can go to after that. Um, and then the, the front window you see here um, is what we what we deem as the, the evidence that we collected. So uh, evidence that we collected to produce the, the alert or, or the remediation that, that's being requested. Um, so you can you can dive into it. And it really depends on, on how much you want to uh, roll up your sleeves and, and dive into uh, the details of it and, and validate you know, what, what we found and, and the advice that, that we're giving. Um, the great thing about it is that we're we're not a black box, um, but the even better side of it is you absolutely don't have to go into this level of detail uh, because of the services that we wrap around um, with all of this. Uh, that that kind of looks again to take on some of that undifferentiated heavy lifting um, of that uh, and just provide you actionable information so that ultimately you know, a sysops person would be able to get that, that alert and understand what's going on uh, and what they need to do to, to remediate that quickly. And then what you see on the, the right is kind of uh, a representation of uh, reporting and the list of incidents. Uh, so as I mentioned, we have some reporting constructs that are available that will give you, um, and I say reporting, I should use air quotes with that. Uh, it's really more of a monitoring as it's a, a live view uh, into what's going on uh, with your environment um, so that you can see trends and react to those trends very quickly. Uh, and then ultimately a, a holistic view of all the incidents that we're finding 
uh, in the environment, whether that's uh, a guard duty finding, uh, an IDS event, um, or maybe a, a web application event, like a SQL injection attack, uh, or something along those lines. Uh, so we also have a, a heat map um, to basically take all that information, um, correlate it into a single view, uh, so that you can see quickly see uh, where you need, you know, where you're where you're getting the most attention from uh, a bad guy perspective. Uh, so we have this kind of categorized into uh, very similar the the guard duty findings uh, from the uh, application attack, brute force, uh, denial of service, uh, maybe it's a reconnaissance, or the the gray area I mentioned, which would be the suspicious activity uh, that we would need to spend more time analyzing. And that also really kind of gives you a demonstration of the criticality of those alerts that we're pulling in as well as you can see the low mediums highs and criticals um, and then gives you a visualization uh, on how many of those you, you you have in your environment so obviously the you know the smaller the circle the uh, less number of incidents you have of that versus the larger circles that have uh, more of those types of incidents with them Integrating this is, is again, pretty seamless. Uh, we deploy utilizing uh, a very restrictive IM policy uh, and require a cross account role. Um, with that, everything deploys in your environment. We have automatic discovery, automatic asset discovery with that. And with our vulnerability scanning, uh, we have a scale to zero feature. And what that means is uh, we'll have a vulnerability scanner appliance that spins up in your environment. Uh, does the scans and then spins back down. Uh, there's a couple of triggers that, that'll cause that to spin back up, uh, such as uh, if you have a remediation that you say that you've remediated on, um, it'll spin up to do a validation on that and then spin back down. Uh, also, because we're able to monitor the, the environment ongoing, we're seeing everything as it scales in and scales out. So as you add different assets to it, um, that appliance will spin up to scan that appropriately and then and then spin back down. Um, I'd be remiss if I if I didn't mention that we're also a pre-approved scanner for AWS. Um, so that that means that you do not have to fill out the uh, penetration and vulnerability scanning form with AWS. Um, that could be uh, quite burdensome since we do a, a continuous vulnerability scanning. Um, but since we're pre-approved for that, uh, we can scan all instance types as well. Um, and you, you don't have to, to worry about filling out that form. And then everything that you see in the, the UI, uh, it's all API driven. Uh, so we have a very robust API available. Um, so if you have people uh, you know, in your organization that maybe um, aren't super excited about UIs, uh, you can absolutely do API integration with that uh, and pull back into um, you know, things like maybe you're, you're utilizing workflow systems like Jira or ServiceNow um, or things along those lines. And it's very easy to de deploy our integration. Um, we are, we have all our products available uh, on the marketplace. Um, you can visit the marketplace. We also offer a 30 day free trial there. Uh, so if you want to go in and, and really kind of uh, play around with it and see what it's all about. Um, we welcome that. To, we welcome you to, to give that a try. Um, and then ultimately, the our website, uh, alertlogic.com. And then we have a, a few different resources uh, that we wanted to, to list out here um, that will also be provided to you. Uh, so, you know, we have a, a Bright Talk channel uh, as well as a YouTube channel to where we'll go over, uh, you know, not only things about our product, but you know, since we, we see uh, quite a bit of security visibility in our over 4,000 customers, uh, we talk about security trends that we see um, and really things that we want to bring to, um, you know, our customers and, you know, the public's attention in general, um, because ultimately it's, a, it's an all ships rise scenario. The, the more all of us are secure, the, the better off everybody is. So thank you, everybody. And uh, with that, we can open it up for uh, Q&A. And we do have a few questions that have come in already. I think the first one for you, Jeremy. I think they're asking if you're a vulnerability scanner, can it perform authenticated scans? If it's uh, SCAP compliant, and can it perform CIS scans? So the, the short answer is, is yes to that. 
Um, so with the vulnerability scanning, um, we give the capabilities to do, um, you know, authenticated or unauthenticated scans. Uh, we really recommend doing authenticated scans because that gives more visibility and ultimately the more visibility we have into those assets, uh, the more uh, advice and the better advice that, that we can give to that. Uh, we make that very easy. Um, you can either do that per asset um, or you can do that, you know, at the, the various construct levels that, that you have inside of uh, AWS. Perfect. Uh, another one here, as you mentioned, uh, Bitcoin mining compromise can guardedly monitor blockchain traffic. So what we're looking for on uh, Bitcoin is we can detect Bitcoin or blockchain activity in, in two separate ways. Um, through threat intelligence and um, DNS reputation, we can identify mining pools. Uh, the other way that we can identify um, is through the anomaly detection from the networking ports. So generally speaking, a lot of those um, those tools use fairly well-known ports. Uh, they're typically ports that are not used um, otherwise. And so we, we have been able to find quite a number of um, Bitcoin activity and mining activity uh, through unusual port detections uh, through the anomalies detection. And let's see, uh, there was another for alert logic. Uh, if a customer has a lot of uh, AWS accounts, can you map the settings through alert logic solutions or do you have a more of a holistic view? So yeah, absolutely, you can uh, map those. We have. Uh, we have many different size customers, uh, you know, from from SMB all the way up to uh, enterprise customers um, that you know have you know tens of thousands of accounts, and you can absolutely map those inside the the Alert Logic portal uh, and give a you know both a holistic view uh, as well as a mapping uh, into those those accounts. Another one here says, uh, how does Alert Logic notify customers, uh, and what will your notification contain? Yeah, absolutely. So um, it, it depends on the criticality or the severity of what we're, we're seeing. Uh, so we have a low, mediums, highs, and criticals. Um, all of those will be, uh, at minimum, uh, an email that will contain a brief synopsis of what we found. Uh, as well as a link back into the Alert Logic portal uh, incident directly, so you can click that and go directly to the incident. Uh, the highs and criticals, um, you know, as you might suspect, are, are more uh, high and critical in nature. Uh, so you want to remediate those as soon as possible. So those will, in addition to an email, will also be uh, a phone call from one of our security analysts in the SOC uh, to really help, uh, you know, work through that remediation aspect. Excellent. Uh, I think this one might be for Richard. It says, do you have an example uh, where a breach was detected and you were able to remediate based on uh, the alert logic notifications and the AWS tools? Hi. Uh, well, I'm, I'm pleased to say we've, we've not had a breach uh, alerted through the system uh, to date. Um, is always a scary question. Um, but we, you know, <laughs> we have seen a number of things that have been flagged through there. Um, you know that guard duty findings that have come in through AWS. Um, what, one of the ones that we kind of fall foul of occasionally is that our administrators are only allowed to access the APIs from the office. So we, we have some conditions around that. Uh, and occasionally we'll, we'll see the notification there that, that somebody's kind of connected in from their home IP. And of course that's, <laughs> it, it, it sits outside the typical trends, so that gets flagged. Um, so I'm, I'm pleased to say those aren't breaches, and we've been able to very quickly detect who forgot to uh, join the VPN before they tried to sign in. Um, but some of the things that we, we've kind of found really, really valuable, as I say, were the um, the integration between alert logic and the, the proactive finding. It's a, a, the, the proactive findings that Alert Logic is flagging in AWS, so the things that allow us to um, kind of improve our configuration strength inside AWS. So um, they, those are possibly the most valuable things for us. Perfect. Um, and it looks like this one might be for you too, Jeremy. And is there any other services from that Alert Logic integrates with besides Guard Duty? Yeah. So. Uh, we, we integrate with a few other AWS services, uh, so things like uh, AWS Config, uh, as well as Amazon Inspector, um, and make that uh, you know pretty seamless to, to integrate as well with Guard Duty uh, and bring those back in. And so all of those would be in uh, you know really that, that single point of view or single management pane. Um, 
to ultimately uh, give you that that single pane that single pane of glass view into everything that's you know of a, a security value uh, from your your assets to the AWS um, uh, constructs. All right, it looks like that's all the questions we're going to get. So I want to thank everyone for attending our webinar. Uh, thank you very much.